why not create a backdrop for an existing Hot Toys base and maybe throw in some lights? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Crafted by Metamorphic Customs. This week, I'll be taking you through the process of creating this diorama. This is a backdrop for those diamond-shaped Hot Toys bases. Now, it fits snugly against the back of one of those bases, but because of the wedge shape of the diorama backdrop, if you will, it stands on its own. You don't need the Hot Toys base. Plus, I kind of uh, went ahead and made it double-sided should you want to turn it around and maybe take some cool pictures with a completely different style of wall. Why not? It was a cool process. Now, I started this diorama actually last year, um, and I had to stop it because I had some of the other commissions that uh, had priority. I needed to deal with those first. But this week, I actually got a chance to go back to this commission and finish it. This one's actually being made for Aries of Six Scale Cantina, uh, both the YouTube channel and the website. By the way, if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel or his website, you may want to do that, especially if you're into Hot Toys, specifically Star Wars Hot Toys. Great resources. So go ahead and check that out. But the point is, this diorama was and is for him. So hopefully he likes it. But let's check it out. I'm going to start off in the workshop, and you'll see that some of the components are already put together. They're just the very basics. It's pretty simple. You'll start with two pieces of XPS foam put together. I'll take you through it. And the LED lighting is kind of already laid out, but I'll take you through that too. I'll tell you what I did. So no big deal there. Yeah, that's about it. I guess let's go to the workshop. So I started with uh, two pieces of XPS foam. They're about 15 inches tall, and they're just glued together at a 90 degree angle like you see here. Uh, the color that you see, that gray color, don't worry, we're not going to be using it. I'm actually going to be reapplying color at the end. The angle on the Hot Toys base kind of matches the angle I cut there at the bottom. You don't really need that. It wasn't really necessary. I just kind of like that snug fit. But what's important here are the LED strips. Uh, that I ran along these channels that I've cut out with a hot wire foam cutter. You don't kind of did that off camera, you don't see it, but the LED strips are the simple, cheap ones you can get on Amazon. It's the same LED strip I use to light all my details, right? But you just run it back and forth, as I'm indicating here with my hand, uh, until you get to the very end there, and I kind of push the plug out, carve a hole, and push the plug out so that it can plug into the AC adapter at the end. Um, so if you've ever worked with LED strips uh, from Amazon, and if you haven't, just pick one up. They're pretty easy to work with, with a little bit of spare wires and some liquid electrical tape or just regular electrical tape, you can easily run these connections. And what I have here are translucent pieces or completely transparent pieces of acetate. Acetate paper, uh, your traditional acetate paper used for overhead projectors, if you're old enough to remember what those were. Uh, but that's all it is, uh, clear acetate or acrylic sheets that I've spray painted white to diffuse them because these will go over the lights. So you can either spray paint them white, you can even use parchment paper to cover them uh, from the inside, that'll work as well. But I've gone ahead and just spray painted them white. Uh, right now they look pretty opaque, but when the lights come on, you'll see it. they do a good job at, well, diffusing the lights. I'll eventually glue those on later, but for now I want to add a little bit more detail using FW inks, and I'm just using a uh, black, black FW ink here, to add a little bit of shading to the edges of these transparent pieces I've cut out. And if you notice the bubbles uh, building up in my airbrush, yeah, that means it's clogged. Uh, <laughs> I had to clean my airbrush a few times during this process, but for now I just kept trying to make it work. Since this is for a Star Wars Hot uh, Toys, I'm trying to incorporate that lived-in, dirty, weathered look that's normally seen in the Star Wars universe. You'll notice a lot of the XPS parts I'm using here were previously cut out, like this one right here. It's just a column. Take a look at that shape. Um, I actually carved that out again with a hot wire foam uh, cutter, 
and now I'm going to use a sanding smudge to just sand that down. Try to get a smooth texture. I'll still be laying more foam over this to smooth it out, but this is nice to get rid of any uh, bumps that might show up later. Uh, so, and in a separate episode, I will be going over other cutting tools. I've used blades before. I use blades all the time, but I also use a hot wire foam cutter that I keep referring to. It's invaluable. Um, there's no way around it when you really start getting into these bases, including cutting very, very thin shapes out of XPS like you see here. That's about, that's less than a quarter of an inch, more like an eighth of an inch thick. There's no way you're gonna cut, get an even, straight, perfect cut like that on a piece this long and and, and this big uh, without using a hot wire foam cutter. There's no way you're gonna get that with a hand tool. Uh, also, ignore the graffiti-like black paint on that piece. That was just trying to declog the airbrush I previously mentioned. And what I'm doing is I am using hot glue here to glue that on as a layer, as a cover over the column piece I previously cut out and referenced. I'll use hot glue to slowly uh, glue this down step by step. I essentially lay down strips of hot glue and then press down the thin sheet of XPS foam little by little until it's completely covering that column. Next, I'm just going to test fit this. This is far from done, uh, but I wanna make sure it lines up and it does, which is great. This is by far the most complex part of this build, right? These, these silly columns. Uh, and you'll see what I mean later. I'm just gonna trace this out because I wanna cut off that extra piece that comes off the back. And of course, I'm using my metal ruler here and I'm gonna use my Ulfa blade and this should be an easy cut since it's a fairly thin piece of foam. And perfect. I'm repeating all of this twice because there's two columns. So most of the things I'll be doing here are actually repeated twice. And when I've got those two ready, they've been cut out, I'm just going to present them where they will eventually go. And what I'm going to try to do here is mark out a line that I want to cut. Uh, you'll see I'm using my right angle here, uh, and I'm going to try to mark out a straight line matching on both columns, going across both columns. That's going to be important later. That's what I'm doing here too. I'm just reinforcing that line I've just drawn. And going ahead again and drawing out that line, which I will use my uh, wire cutter to cut. And another line there. And these are the vertical, I guess these right now are the horizontal lines. You'll know what that means later. So these lines here will make more sense. So using the hot wire cutter, I cut this line going along the entire column. And I know what you're saying, hey, you didn't cut the two lines you previously drew. Well, there's a point to that. You'll also see that out of the component I cut out, I cut that into three pieces. Hang on, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna use hot glue to glue this piece back on there. And, and again, you're probably thinking, well, if you didn't want it to come off, why'd you cut it off? Well, you'll see. The whole point was to get at this middle section here, and I found this to be the easiest way. Perhaps there's an easier way, but this is the best way I could think of at the time. So I glued the bottom part and the top part, and you've got this center chunk missing there, which is what I have in my hand now. From this, I'm going to grab the component that's in my right hand right now and present it back. I want to glue this back in here. And I also want to glue the part that goes towards the front, the part closest to you right now. The idea is to leave that center channel empty, and you'll see what I mean here. I'm gluing in the back part. And there we go. Now I've cut these circular components also on the wire cutting table, which you're probably very curious about. I promise to make a video just on that. Uh, it's great for cutting little circles, and these little circles, I'm going to, they're varying sizes and diameters. I've got three different diameters, all going from large to small. 
and I'm going to glue these in here in the center channel that I've cut out previously. And these circles or these cylinders are going to be basically laser emitters. They're supposed to be representative of that scene in The Phantom Menace where Darth Maul and Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are fighting. This is not an exact replica of that scene. It's just, again, representative. And that's what it's supposed to look like when uh, glued in the channel. That's why we made all those weird cuts to the, uh, to the columns. And I've also made this shape again with the wire cutter. And I'm going to glue it between the two uh, cylinders here in the center, just to add some, some shapes in here and some different textures and levels. I'm also cutting uh, thin squares, again, just to add levels and textures, and, uh, make it look a little bit more interesting. And I'm gonna glue that right in the middle of the last piece I glued down. And a couple more thin rectangular pieces or strips that I'm going to glue down to just add levels and just make it a little more interesting. And these I'm going to glue down with um, Aileen's or Eileen's uh, tacky glue. It's just um, a slightly better PVA glue. And you can get this glue at your daughter's store, your hobby store, uh, online. It's really not hard to find. And just checking to see how everything looks so far, fit-wise, and so far so good. And now for some more thin sheets of XPS foam. I'm just gonna, again, try to add some layering here, uh, make it a little bit more visually interesting. Gonna add pieces uh, at the very top and the bottom here using hot glue. I've marked out where I'd like it to sit, that makes it easier, and I'm going to use the same process I did before. I'm just going to put down a strip of hot glue, press it down, uh, and then just keep coming back with strips of hot glue and slowly uh, just bend the XPS foam. That's what another thing that's great about XPS foam. It, it could, be, in, in thin strips, it's fairly flexible and you can work with it and bend it around curves. It's really a great crafting product in addition to being an insulation product. And here I've mixed a one-to-one -one mixture of Mod Podge and craft grade black paint. Uh, this is used to seal the XPS foam as well as give it some color uh, because black is the best base coat usually when you're going to paint a metallic surface, which I intend to do here. I'm also painting these thin squares of XPS foam uh, that I've cut out and these will be placed uh, on the center back of that 90 degree angle I cut in between the channels for the LEDs. You'll see me do that later. But right now I'm just base coating them all. Now it's time to actually glue down the transparent or translucent, I should say, strips uh, that are going to be the strips in front of the LEDs. I'm using, again, Aileen's or Aileen's, whatever, uh, PVA glue here. And just laying these down carefully. I've carefully cut these strips of clear acetate uh, to be just slightly bigger than the channels I cut in the foam. That's how they're staying on here, obviously. And time for some metallic base coating. I'm using Vallejo Metal Color. Yes, that is how you pronounce it, Vallejo. <laughs> and this is Dual Aluminum. It's the name of the color. Uh, these are great for airbrush use. Um, so I'm just applying that in uh, multiple thin layers here. 
because I previously coded this with Mod Podge, uh, technically I should be able to come in with a rattle can and spray paint this side of it uh, without melting the foam. Uh, but it's just sometimes easier to do this with an airbrush. Again, more control. Uh, I'm also going to do this on these square pieces I've cut out. Going back now to the FW Black Ink, I'm just going to hit the sides of these flat uh, square pieces and flat rectangular pieces just to give it some weathering and give it some interest. Um, same in here inside these channels I've cut out where the laser emitters, uh, if you will, are located. I'm going to go back there and just darken that up. Um, this gives it depth and it just makes it a lot more interesting. I'm going to cut some of these back pieces to size. I cut them uh, originally a little too large on purpose. Uh, and then I'm going to glue them down on these back pieces. I Previously I cut them larger uh, just in case. I wanted to make sure I had enough of it uh, painted up. So when I glued it down now, uh, it would be nice and flush against the columns that are go right next to it. Speaking of the columns, I'm going to black out that section here. I don't want any light bleed coming through the columns, especially through the channels I've cut out. That's not what it's supposed to do, right? So this black Mod Podge paint that I've mixed up will really help with that. And next up, I'm going to get some light gray paint, any light gray, almost white, will do here. And I'm just adding some paint detailing here on the, again, the laser emitters, which makes me smile every time I say that. Uh, laser emitting pieces of foam. And a nice thin brush like this is always best, um, obviously, when applying this careful detailing. Um, after the light gray, I'm using a yellow ochre um, kind of color. Not that this is going to be the final color, but really as a base for the bright red, which I am now applying. And it's just a thin line at the base of that last cylinder there, the smallest cylinder. Again, a little bit of inspiration from that scene in The Phantom Menace. Next up, some Hobbycraft black paint here. And I'm going to be weathering the metallic surfaces using a sponge, which you see right there in the middle of your screen. I got this sponge at the local hobby store, but you can use any sponge, literally a sponge from your sink, hopefully a clean one, right? Uh, just tear it up a bit, get some irregular surfaces on the sponge, and then dip the sponge in the paint, wipe some of the paint off, come back, and this creates some really nice uh, weathering on the walls. This is great for for any type of modeling, but if you've got like one-to-one -one Star Wars helmets you want to weather them, this is this is a good technique for that as well. Uh, but I'm using it here on the wall to just create, again, uh, black scratches, uh, just to show some age. And I'm show, doing it on the columns as well, especially around the corners. Uh, that's where you want to concentrate. Um, just don't overdo it. There's no guide here. Just Get a feel for it, whatever you think would look natural, wherever you think these uh, black scratches or uh, scuff marks would actually show up on the, on the surface here. And after I'm done with the black, I'm going to do this same technique, but using dull aluminum, which was the original color, the metal color that I base coated, or I'm sorry, layer coated the columns and the metal components. And I'm going to use Saran Wrap as a mask because I'm gonna come in now with my airbrush uh, to apply kind of a, a heat effect on the tips of these laser emitting uh, cylinders here. Uh, and I love Saran Wrap for this. I'm just creating a snug fit around those cylinders. Now I'm gonna use some Vallejo Scarlet Red to just hit the tips of the cylinders 
not go all the way down that's the point uh, just create this glowing effect or heat effect after the scarlet red I'm going to come back with Vallejo hot orange and just hit the very very tips of the cylinders and I think I'm ready to go ahead and glue down those columns perfect good fit here gluing down the other one so far so good now it's time to turn back to the Mod Podge. I'm going to pour some in here and mix it with some tile grout, sand colored tile grout. And you're probably wondering what the heck I'm gonna do here, right? Uh, I'm mixing this, it's a 50-50, uh, one-to-one -one mix. And I'm going to put this on the back. Why? Uh, no reason really, just to get a different look on the back because you're not really gonna see the back from the front or the front from back right so this will gives a good opportunity to have two different types of dioramas one that you will mainly see from the front but a different texture on the back that could be useful for photography or any other use really and um, I'm going to come in with some FW sepia inks here and an airbrush and do exactly as you see here I'm just giving it some tonality some some shading and make it making it interesting um, I'm actually trying to use the the little divots and patterns that are already there that naturally formed once that paste that I created dried uh, and just trying to highlight those and then going into and just doing streaks um, something you might see on a wall in um, most Isley or tattooing uh, so it just completely changes you got one scene in the front and a completely different scene in the back and this was pretty much it this was the the last step. I love doing this, by the way, as you can tell. It's just, uh, it's just fun. And that's the final product uh, when placed on a Hot Toys base. Still don't like the floor of the Hot Toys base, but it fits. And this is what it looks like in decent lighting here. Um, not bad. Not my, not my favorite metal texture, right, on XPS foam, uh, but. It works and the back looks pretty cool uh, it's completely different uh, it's actually shocking going from the front to the back uh, but you'll I don't think you'll ever see both of them at the same time so it it works somebody turn on the power there you go that worked uh, the diffusion of the uh, transparent now translucent clear acrylic really it really worked um i think it looks pretty good with mall on it uh given the space requirements here of the space and, and this backdrop it's it's not too bad not too bad looks neat i would say and these hot toys look so good uh in specific poses i mean they look like a miniaturized version of the actor uh, on screen they're really incredible and they they really stand out when in some kind of display or diorama. Very nice silhouette here uh, when you're turning off the room lights and just leaving the diorama light on. And a quick close-up so you can see the textures uh, up close and the floor plate while the lights are off. And yes, I also made this floor plate for it. That's not the base that comes with the Darth Maul base. Um, I also, the flip side of that floor plate has a different color too, for variation. And this is the back of the diorama. Again, great for, for pictures. Just, you would never know that this is the back of the diorama you just saw. Uh, which is a neat little surprise, I think. So, what'd you guys think? I always like to ask that, and I really mean it. Tell me what you think. Go down in the comments and just let me know, as always, any other techniques I could have used, any other strategies. What did you think of the final product? Speaking of, I'll tell you what I thought of the final product. I thought it came out pretty good. That said, I've never really been a fan of 
trying to simulate metallic surfaces directly on XPS foam. I know a lot of diorama makers do that, not all of them, but some of them, and I've always seen it and I've said, you know, in some photographs it kind of works, uh, in others it doesn't, so I, I said, hey, I've never really tried that. So let me try it. Metallic surfaces directly on XPS foam rather than on styrene plastic, which is what I usually do. Still not convinced on metallic surfaces on XPS foam. It still has that porous, even if you coat it, right, uh, with a simple uh, Mod Podge uh, coating like you saw me do. It's, uh, I don't know, there's something about it. Something looks weird to me. Hopefully, uh, Aries likes it, right? Because this base was for him. So Aries, hey, let me know. Yeah, and then the back of it, you saw it. It was a completely different coating. Why did I do that? Why, right? I didn't need to do that. I could have just made him the back metallic too. But I thought, well, you've got this wedge shape. What if we coated it differently, right? And then you could possibly use the back for a different kind of, maybe a display, but more importantly, maybe some photographs if you wanted to take some pictures. One last thing before we go. You probably noticed something and you're saying, hey, wait a minute. I noticed that floor plate was different that was that's not the floor plate that comes with that Darth Maul diamond shaped base and that floor plate has this marbling uh, effect that's actually pretty easy to accomplish and not to worry I didn't skip it that's actually the next video I'll be teaching you how to do that it's going to be a quick video just on how to apply a marble effect to a piece of plastic whether it's flat rounded curved anything and it's done all with sprays, either with spray cans or airbrushing. You'll want to watch the next episode. It'll be a fun one. And as always, guys, again, please let me know what you think. Uh, go ahead and comment down below. Remember, the material list is always down in the video description. So go in and check that out. If you like the video or whether you like it, you got something from it, go ahead and get hit that like button. And if you want to see the next episode, you're interested, you know what to do. Hit subscribe, guys. And until next time, stay crafty.